All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Dororo, Dororo episode, episode 9. nine. All right, okay. the last episode we had a very peculiar monster. A very terrifying be, monster. Uh, defeated. Mm -hmm. It was in a, in a like an amazing way. Yeah. And, and Yakimaru survived a ridiculous fall. Mm hmm But, you know, hey, there you go. Yeah, and now we're moving on to whatever's next, be it another monster or something what else. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're on their journey, mm -hmm. but there's still the lingering worry out there that that soldier that they let survive is eventually going message. to pass along the info, and yep. then, um, yeah, mm -hmm. Kyakimaru might be end, end up being hunted. Right. But yeah, he's regaining more and more of his senses back, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's awesome. So y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. Uh, so you can, can smell, smell that. It. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, it's hot. Need some water. Some food, maybe. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. Doro's hot. Fire! Light it up, baby. Let's go, say ya. Oh. Oh no, it's very well. It's the whole thing of what does Hyakimaru do without Doro? Yeah. Yeah. Doro, lo, karada, atsui. Yeah, my God. So you're in the shade a little yeah. bit. Whoa. It's his mom. Oh. Aww. Yeah, Yakima's not gonna leave, don't worry. Oh, that's a good line. That's a good line. Oh. Yep, here we go, Jacob. Yeah. Oh, little Doro. Oh, dang. <laughs> Derpy Doro face. ダメだって言ってるだろ。おいらだって悪い奴ら <laughs> oh, Bullseye! He's getting pretty good. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, okay. oh, okay, the mob. Okay. Gotcha. Run with me. Whoa, whoa! Spears are pretty great. Yeah, too. spears are pretty legit too. Oh, so they, they won. actually won. Holy crap! Okay. But that seventy percent of seventy percent of them are dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Wow. It's like acquiring a family, you know, just by, we'll, we'll take care of you, stay with us. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. I mean, a lot of ways he didn't. 
Oh no, oh, they're gonna lead a coup. Crap. Yeah. Whoa! Dang, they're attacking. They don't look tired to me. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, now they've just got to survive as they can from now on alone. Yeah. But because they were friends and stuff, he didn't let them die or didn't have them killed, which is but, nice. You but know. they could, I mean... Oh, look how much thinner she is. Die. Oh, my God. Oh, my Oh my god, yeah. Oh my god. Oh. Wow. Holy crap. The flower? Oh my god. I mean... Oh, so they remind Dororo of the hell of just... Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're trying to survive. Oh, the fire, yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, crap. Uh oh. Oh, yeah. It's a psycho. Yeah. No. Crap. Oh. 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 He's dead. Oh. Oh. Right in wow. front of the. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah. Doro backstory. Mm -hmm. Oh man. No. Oh. Then winter. Yeah. Oh, oh my man. god. Oh man. And you can see her getting more and more mm -hmm. haggard as she's yep. probably doing yep. everything she can to make sure that Doro, you know just is able to live. live. Yeah. Oh, dang. Wait. Wait, that's Itachi, yeah. No way. What the heck? No. Wow, recruiting, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, that's rough. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, it's hot. Yeah, it'll scald you. Oh my god. Wow, and Itachi. Oh. 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 Oh my god. Doro, drink quick. お母ちゃんは大丈夫? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like, I know how I can- <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, here it is. But those words probably help Doro with everything from here on out. Yeah. Oh, like Doro collapsing behind Hyakimaru. Yeah. Yeah, and this is it. That puts a whole new context onto Dororo seeing Mio. Yeah, yeah. Oh. おお、ヒューリス。おお、ヒューリス。おお、ヒューリス。おお、ヒューリス。おお、ヒューリス。おお、ヒューリス。おお、ヒューリス。おお、ヒューリス。おお、ヒューリス。おお、ヒューリス。
No, because this is, I think, the thing they're bringing up. The samurai are the ones that are in the war conflict, right? Uh, yeah. But because he has this sense of scavenge only from those that are not weak, basically. Oh, gotcha. He's setting himself up for failure. And that's why Itachi's logic was right, in that now that you've established yourself as a reputation and you have this respect, well, no, join with those that prey on the weak, basically. Mm -hmm. They will now respect you enough, even though you're just a bunch of farmers, to be like, okay, we'll subsume Mm -hmm. you into our army. And he was right. They probably Mm -hmm. would have, because they're probably desperate for more troops and stuff. And they were being enough of a hassle that, yeah. But either option would have ended with the parents being killed, probably. You either end up in a situation where you're flipping a coin or rolling a die on basically whether or not your side's going to win the war or not, and then everyone dies, basically. Mm-hmm. Or you continue with this, you know, way right, of doing and probably things. probably will eventually die anyway. The only the hope then would be, be, would be that basically... You get left alone or something. Well, well, and up till that point, you're able to do well enough that you know, when you're gone, your wife and child are able to be okay. Well, you know, maybe your child has grown up enough and, you know, things like right. that. But. but that's the thing I think that's that's the underlying problem here was that there it was always doomed to fail because the more people that they took on in order to join their the brigand thing, that gave them more strength so that the kid and the mom would be more protected. But that also meant that they had to scavenge more in order to take care of them. Which means sure. they have to make bigger mm-hmm. and bigger risks, yeah. and everything can basically go wrong in a split second. Right, and and the, it just yeah. hurts that Dororo had no influence on any of that because that's how mm-hmm. at yep. m- mercy you, the mercilessness, if you will, of this world is. Right, like, ah, uh, mm-hmm. like, and the fact that uh, Dororo is still able to, like, even though it probably is part of that, like you know trying to you know seem more boyish and whatnot sure um the fact that she's able to have a positive outlook on life the world how she carries herself like she does Uh that's a big deal yeah because yeah Yeah. if anything that seems like her superpower as cheesy as that is to say because to go through all of that and be positive that's that seems almost like yeah. ridiculous so I, I would put it in a way that we can relate to jacob is that doro just has a lot of trauma and just doesn't um doesn't right. face it because yep, it's easier not mm-hmm. to right for survival that's what survival it's what you have to do, to do. yeah yeah, yeah. Just, and and in a lot of ways because she's figured out how to do that and and basically live with that yeah you know um that goes to show how much she can also help uh, mm-hmm. Hyakimaru yeah. because, you know, of of what Hyakimaru's had to deal with and, and all of that. Mm-hmm. So, oh. yeah. I also love that there's a, there's a beautiful coming full circle here with this. And mm-hmm. I don't know if the show's going to go into this anymore, but I kind of wanted to. Is that Hyakimaru, when we first found him, was a child. Mm-hmm. And that's why I kind of called Hyakimaru the child. We didn't have a name for right. him yet. Mm-hmm. But even though he was a grown, like almost near adult boy in terms of like physical body and what uh-huh. have you, in every other respect, Hyakimaru was a child. Right. Wandering about the world mm-hmm. is at the complete mercy of his environment. Yep. And although he can definitely dish out some serious, you know, punishment. pain, yeah. punishment, and also mm-hmm. just protect himself in general. Mm hmm really not the only benefit that he has is that he looks intimidating enough to anyone that you know wanders near him that they're just like and it's just one person it's not mm-hmm. like he has anything on him that we can gain so we just kind of let him be and right. he just goes around hunting his demons monsters mm-hmm. ghouls and what have you but dororo is now in the situation where dororo is protecting the child and not leaving them behind yeah, uh-huh. yeah. in the full yep. thing of being like, yep. not the parent, obviously, but being right. the caretaker, being the well, one that is, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it will like supporting. In, if, if any of y'all have seen the movie fifth element, Oh um, yeah. In that movie, there's a character Lilu who uh-huh. is basically, you know, while 
while she is, you know, a grown adult, uh-huh. she has no life experience. So it's it's very much something of, you know, uh, she needs someone to take care of her, but then she also takes care of the other people around her. And it's and it's great. Right. right. Um, the thing is, that's a that's a, a much that whole idea of the sort of, you know, mature, but inexperienced and innocent kind of character. Yeah, that's a fairly common trope. Oh, yeah. As far as female characters and usually not done in the best ways no um no but it's much less common to have that for guys yes um and now now i'm realizing oh yeah no that's that's what that's what dororo is here or uh takimaru takimaru yeah um and and i love the idea of the child that's taking care of the the older person right know? yes um, yes yeah because usually uh. usually in in those sorts of stories you know mm-hmm. it's it's a lot it was a lot more common in like like older times and stuff because of the whole like sure and it, and it could get kind of creepy right. um but but in because there would be this this uh unequal power dynamic basically between the the guy and the girl yeah. whereas in this case they're both children yep. right and which which makes but but at the same time they cover each other's bases in different ways mm-hmm. which is just absolutely wonderful like it, it makes for a great character dynamic and it makes for something where where they can help each other grow. Yeah. Because because up till now, I feel like we didn't fully see how Dororo could grow. Right. What right? was the path for Dororo's uh-huh. character arc? Yeah. Dororo is pretty much just Dororo. Just, just, right. just kind the, of being a simple, mm-hmm. um, positive, right. uh, quirky... The one that basically... Yeah, kind of character. ...carried the show so that Hyakimaru could be quiet and brooding and it wouldn't fall apart. Yeah, right? and do his too boring or anything spiritual like battle protagonist. Exactly, kind of right. Um, but now that we have this, mm-hmm. it's a bit more clear, and yep. and I love that it that it because like like you you caught on to it, mm-hmm. Doro being a girl, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. So that like I was actually surprised when that happened. I'm usually not when that kind of I mean, twist I got happens. reconvinced back. That's true. In like the middle, that's true. They did they did a good job of 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 making Doro seem just like you know yeah just just, just completely you know. ambiguous in yep. terms of gender. Um, but uh. But that that throws new context onto stuff that's happened before, like with Mio, right? Where yeah. where Dororo sees her with the soldiers, oh. you know, like that that'd be that'd be you know scary enough and traumatizing enough as a as a as a young boy, but as a young girl that's pretending to be a boy, even more so because yeah. like and. <laughs> After seeing after seeing people cannibalize other people for food huh. on the battlefield and yeah. things like that, it's like that happened. Huh. And and I was kind of wondering if they were gonna have like if they were gonna have something like that happen. Um, yeah, I'm was... just glad that the person went back to their meal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, the 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 mom and dad I think fulfilled their kind of trope of just being who they're meant to be. So that there's nothing super complicated about them. Mm-hmm. But what I liked about them was that they were fierce protectors. They were almost a bit too overbearing in yeah. certain parts. Yeah, you might say that it could have gone better if they basically said, okay, we're going to just go try and start over, you right. know, if possible, right? Yeah. Um, try so- and hide somewhere, somewhere far away, basically. hide somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Um, mm-hmm. Then they might have been okay. Yeah. But. Whereas the father has this idealist kind of sense of, of justice and he needs right. to go and punish the wrongdoers. Right. Mother is a little bit more pragmatic in that mm-hmm. she will fight to make sure that they don't have to deal with this unless right. um, unless there's basically a way that they can survive through it. Which is in some ways showing how cold the mother had gotten over time. But the father may be burned hot in the other way, whereas mm. he was basically needing this fire to right. let loose the anger and the frustration sure. of how much he raged against this world being so mm-hmm. cruel by yeah. killing other people. I, which, I, I love how they yeah. handled the father's end Yeah, in that there's these people here right mm-hmm. and the father's like this is what happened to us i need to i need I'm to stop to this step in right and make this yeah stop. i have to do something and the mom's like don't do it you honey die. yeah like think about your your family like this is yep. more important and if she wasn't there he you know, would have done it right and and he didn't do it right right he actually listened to right. her right he listened to her uh-huh. and everything could have been fine and they were you know were about to leave but just and the then, cycle of just, violence yep. the, mm-hmm. the natural right, one exactly. of someone just happening well, to be there it's the it's, it's perfect 
it's poetic irony yeah. or or I don't know about irony but yeah. well I mean yeah <laughs> because it basically highlights the problem with the dad mm-hmm. that he that he was too obsessed with his mm-hmm. with his you know quest for for justice you yeah, know revenge what whatever yeah. right um that basically that came back to bite him mm-hmm. right and then just because of that right yep. he didn't want to fight the person he wanted to leave you know and then when he defends himself, then suddenly everyone sees, oh, you killed one of our buddies. Now yep. we're going to kill you. Yep. yep. And that caused this whole thing to happen. But mm-hmm. if you look at this with a little bit more of a balance perspective, which is probably what the whole Buddhism aspect of this is going to lead to, is that if that didn't happen, Doro would have never found Hyakimaru. Mm-hmm. Yep. Never saved this right. poor kid. Right. The idea that even if the flowers wow. are blooming from uh-huh. absorbing the blood of the fallen, they're blooming. They're blooming. Yeah, it's still a very pretty flower. Yeah, right. Even though for Dororo specifically, that's a traumatic. That's flower that's, right that's there. a traumatic flower right yeah. there. Understandably so. Right. Right. Other people might be able to look at it and say, "This is gorgeous." Uh-huh. Right. Might be able to bring a smile to their face in the midst of all this crazy madness. Uh-huh. So, the whole idea yeah. though of a flower soaking up the moisture from the ground that is so filled with blood yeah. that it ends up changing the color of the petals. I mean, because like... does seem plausible. Well, we all did that, you know, experiment when we were kids of like, you know, putting food coloring in the water for like, you know, well, for we flowers. We all do that. Well, okay, but you know, yeah, uh-huh. like... Where you know, and then the and then the flower grows, and it has the and it has you know you can see the the food coloring go, going through yeah. the veins of the flower, right? Uh huh. Um, yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. So, do you think that this is somewhat because we now have kind of a character arc in a way for Dororo, We now have a better picture of how this show's going to end. Um. Because I I think I kind of do now. Well, I feel like. I feel like the show is still going to end in largely the same way that we figured it was going to end. Okay. But the thing is, is that the journey to get there will mean more because oh, sure. because originally I was thinking of Dororo as basically just the sort of foil support kind of for Hyakimaru, right? right? Mm-hmm. And and not that Dororo wasn't a great character, right? Yeah. But that Dororo was basically there to make Hyakimaru as a concept of a character work, work. right? Otherwise, you know, otherwise Hyakimaru wouldn't work. Otherwise, Hyakimaru wouldn't work. This show would not work, you know, yep. because you, you need to you need to have that balance, that levity, that you know, um, someone that talks, right? <laughs> you know, Simply. like the the puck to the guts. Like I, I would not yeah. be surprised at all if oh, when wow. if when Nero was was coming up with oh, Berserk, oh my god, he was like, okay, so I want to I want guts. All right, I've got this image for him. Uh-huh. You know, okay, cool. I need a contrast. Wow. I need a Dororo, right? Wow. And then he came up with the puck. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but now, because we, we've we seen all this for, from Dororo and all that stuff, and we know that Dororo also can, you know, that, that basically being with Yakimaru is also helpful for Dororo to heal. Right. Right. Then basically, instead of it being something where it's all about Yakimaru's growth, it's about their growth together. together. And then they'll reach more or less, hopefully, the same end at the show. But it'll be that both of them have grown because of it instead of just Yakimaru. Yeah, in some ways, though, I feel like we have given been given a promise that Dororo will live all the way to the end, though. Yes. I don't think Hyakimaru has to live to the end of this, though. Well... I think he will, mm-hmm. but I don't think he has to. I like, though, that he doesn't Dororo to. was given basically a promise me you'll... Until you'll, the war's over. You'll, you'll mm-hmm. survive it. Yeah, basically. you won't lose to it. You yeah. won't lose to it. Yeah. I love that. Mm-hmm. Because in some ways, she's basically saying... I'm dying. Please make my my mm-hmm. my sacrifice for you. I mean, right. something, live a good life. Live yep. a full life. Mm-hmm. Don't you know? Don't yeah. You know? Don't don't give up. Don't give up. Mm-hmm. And and it's such a simple thing. It's uh huh. It, it's beautiful though because I feel like that promise is something that Dororo is going to echo to Hyakimaru, in that mm-hmm. Hyakimaru is in this war. He is in his own kind of conflict here. Yeah. And it would be so easy to become basically just a dark weapon. Yes. And just absolutely. go and punish, well, like the father, uh-huh. all the evildoers. Well, and that's why, like, I, I... I both absolutely love the the guy that turned on the dad, and I hate him, right? Right. I hate him because yes. he's a scumbag. But the thing is, 
Yeah. There were a lot of things that he said where it's like, yes, that's good. You need mm-hmm. to listen to that. You need to listen mm-hmm. to that. Yeah. In a lot of ways, he was calling out the the dad on, on his flaw, right? right. Mm-hmm. He was also probably voicing the concern that, hey, the rest of us, we might not burn as hot as you, right? Yeah, exactly. And so, so the idea that like he ended up being the one to betray them, awful, right? Yeah. Something like that probably would have happened eventually, even if it wasn't him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then this is the big one. Oh. The, you can't rely on strength alone. Yeah. I feel like that is basically, that is basically the, the theme and the core tenet of this show. Yeah. You can't rely on strength alone. Hyakimaru's father relied on strength alone with the demons. It's not working out anymore, right? Hyakimaru has been relying on strength and it served him very well, but there are points when it's not enough. Yep. And that's why Dororo being here is going to be so important. It was basically right? what happened when Dororo passed out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Suddenly all that strength you have means nothing. You right. need to learn exactly. how to communicate with yeah. people. And he wouldn't have even been able to do that if not for Dororo, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Hence why the whole idea of like, wait, Hyakimaru is not going to leave. No, 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 of course no, he's not. of course not. he's not. Because he he's, needs because you. he's he, learned that lesson. Yeah. But the thing is, he's learned that lesson at kind of like the the superficial level yes. in that in that basically it hasn't been put to the ultimate test yet right and that's what i feel like the the dad and and the and the dad's new kid like yes what that is that's going to be that, that. test right mm-hmm. exactly and then and then if that test can be can be won then hyakimaru will survive they could still go for the tragedy thing if they wanted to mm-hmm. but i don't think they will because of just how bad everything else has been sure right that i feel like we need to have that that happy ending because it'll it'll mean so much more okay you know, because of everything else awful that's happened yeah i, I do feel like the hmm, the idealist in me also wants a wants a pretty happy ending mm-hmm. but i feel like doro growing up and becoming an adult and just being able to live a full life Mm-hmm. Maybe in some ways due to the relationship and the experiences that she shared with Hyakimaru and all mm-hmm. that. I don't think Hyakimaru needs to be there for Dororo at that point. Well, here's something here's something that I Okay. So this is this is a thought that I've had that was kind of debunked a little bit earlier. Okay. But they could still do it if they wanted to. All so right. Hyakimaru has been learning to live with uh all, you know the loss of all of this these different aspects of his body right know, and things like that right mm-hmm. um and it's this journey to recover his body wonderful, wonderful. awesome yeah um i have no doubt that full metal alchemist took in no small amount of inspiration from this here's what i would like to see though or or what i wouldn't be surprised if they decided to do okay Hyakimaru restores himself completely he slays all the demons right right and then basically the the father and the son are the, now the new like enemy kind of a thing okay and sure. and he is able to resolve things but he loses some part of himself again. He loses a leg, an oh. arm, something like that, right? Okay. And then basically he goes back to having prosthetics, right? But it's not something that he can get back because all the demons are gone. Right. And then it's something of, okay, but now we can live our peaceful life, right? So it's, so there's that idea of the scar, okay. right? That there, that that it's not a it's not a fully happy ending because it's not like things haven't been lost along the way, and sure. that's and that's kind of what helps give give it you know impact right i like it um and then there's too much of a problem with that yeah and then it can also be this idea of how they've since doro and hyakimaru have both kind of helped teach each other how to live Mm -hmm. right then they can continue on with that with them both surviving and if that makes sense like sure so so that they still are going to be depending on each other while you know yeah yeah I, I just feel like this is more of a simple coming of age story in that regard. And yet the whole aspect of the mercilessness of those that are children having to deal with this mm-hmm. cruel world is that at what point will the cruelty of the world come back to hit the both of them together like it did with Mio? And I think that's going to be the thing of where it's not going to be just that it hits them outside of, you know, their control, but it's going to be because of their choices a little bit because they specifically Hyakimaru actually are going to probably follow this war to its natural end, which is unfortunately Mm -hmm. one or Mm -hmm. both of them in terms of the parties involved have to die well and they can definitely use the idea of hyakimaru dying to like even if hyakimaru doesn't actually die Uh right they can still like because them living is no certainty 
Not, yes. not in the story and Absolutely. not from their own perspective as, as people, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So, yes. so they could, just in the same way that Hyakimaru was, was very worried for Dororo this episode, mm-hmm. they could have something down the road where Hyakimaru is on the brink of death like he's sure. been before, okay. right? And then it's, no, we got to make sure you're okay kind of a thing. All right. Um, cool. Well, I just, I really hope Hyakimaru doesn't die. Okay. Like, I, I hope he doesn't die. I just feel like it's more of a thing of where Dororo is basically guaranteed to live. I mean, yeah, the show is called Dororo, not Hyakimaru. But again, another thing. I would not say that this is a thing of where we're getting death flags mm. for Hyakimaru as much as it is that Dororo is going to live on. Well, uh-huh. And it's going to be a thing of where her story is. Now, what do you make of it? So you know? actually, the fact that it's called Dororo is why I think... And this will sound weird, but it's why I think we can know that Hyakimaru won't die. Okay. Because when you think about Dororo, now, granted, Dororo, as revealed this episode, there's a whole lot of things that she has to deal with still, right? She has a lot of growth to do and things like that. But the way it's set up from the beginning, it's Hyakimaru is basically in the midst of the darkness, and then Dororo comes in as as this guiding light, kind of. Right. Right? Because the show is called Dororo. Uh Uh-huh. I think that basically means that we're going to have a happy ending. Oh, that basically. Oh, because that, the that, light wins out. Exactly. Basically. That, that gotcha. it might that it might come really close. Right. But then you know, night is dark is just before the dawn. That at the brink, right, there will still be that light. Whether it's from Dororo, whether it's from Hyakimaru, whether it's from both of them, or who knows, right? Okay. That basically the journey they've been on together and the way they've grown together will end up pulling them through in the end. Cool. All right. Well, I'll, I'll hold to that hope. And yeah. you hold to that hope with us, y'all. For those of you that are watching yep. this for the first time, this show is the show is good. It's it's got it's, its it's got its simple it's got its simpler bits where it's not trying to tell mm-hmm. a complicated story, but it has its moments where you're like, yep. oh, oh, I'm invested. And the power of a simple to- a simple story, like, yeah. Oh boy, there's a lot to be found. Yeah. So y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get an early access there. You can watch full-length reactions there. And all this comes with Discord access, so you can chat with us about these stories, about anime in general. You can get involved with the community, uh, hang out and play games. Uh, there's community events there and stuff like that. You can also talk with Jacob about his book. Yes, my sci-fi novel Battle Lines is still available for order on Amazon. The link is in the description below so go check it out yeah so if any of that interests you we'll see you there but until then we're semblance of sanity i'm caleb i'm jacob and we'll see you all next time